Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, retina specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentation, I discussed the changes in the inner retinal tissue structure and the common OCT biomarkers which affect visual prognosis and partial and full thickness retinal tissue defects. In this presentation, I will discuss outer retinal tissue structure changes and corridor thickness and structure changes. Elongation of the photoreceptor layer can be found when there is an accumulation of subretinal fluid. For instance, in cases of central serous chorioretinopathy and some cases of cystoid macular edema, such as diabetic macular edema and other vascular diseases. The elongation is due to loss of contact between the RPE and photoreceptors outer segment preventing phagocytosis of photoreceptors waste products, causing its accumulation. This is a case of diabetic macular edema showing increased retinal thickening with intraretinal cystic changes and hyperreflective foci due to the accumulation of hard exudates that cast shadow. In contrast, the small hyperreflective foci that usually don't cast a shadow may indicate an active inflammatory process due to activated microglia. This diabetic macular edema shows an accumulation of subretinal fluid and elongation of the photoreceptor layer, which appears as a brush borderline. Outer retinal tubulation forms a channel of enclosed photoreceptor dead cells, which appear as a circular lesion in the outer retinal tissue with hyperreflective borders that resembles enclosed photoreceptors and contains hypo and hyperreflective material that may resemble dead RPE cells. Outer retinal tubulation shouldn't be mistaken with intraretinal cysts and they don't indicate active corridoneovascular process either require any treatment. This cross section shows outer retinal tubulation along with intraretinal cysts with a subretinal scar and pigment epithelial detachment. Subretinal scar features consolidated subretinal mass with homogeneous hyperreflectivity. This is a case of advanced age-related macular degeneration that features a disciform scar that appears as consolidated subretinal mass with loss of ellipsoid zone and increased reflectivity of the thinned choroid due to RPE atrophy. In contrast, when the subretinal mass is amorphous, it may contain blood, fibrin, and vascular elements. Therefore, the amorphous subretinal mass may indicate classical subretinal choroidal neovascularization. This OCT cross-section of subretinal choroidal neovascularization shows an amorphous mass with subretinal blood and fluids with disrupted ellipsoid zone along with the increased retinal thickness and cystic formation. However, the amorphous subretinal mass shouldn't be mistaken with subretinal vitelliform accumulation, which appears more homogeneous mass between the RPE and intact ellipsoid zone. OCT is one of the best meth methods to diagnose and accurately measure and locate drusens. As in this OCT cross section shows drusen in different sizes and shapes as hard or small drusen will appear as a small area of drusenoid material deposits between the RPE and Brooks membrane with size no more than 63 microns. In contrast, soft or larger drusen will appear more homogeneous with an increase in size between 63 and 124 microns. However, the soft drusen may combine with ellipsoid zone disruption and interretinal pigment migration. When large amount of drusenoid material accumulate between the RPE and Brooks membrane, it forms drusenoid RPE detachment which can reach a size of a half disc diameter. Pigment epithelial detachment, PED, is a separation of RPE layer from 
Brooks membrane due to the accumulation of fibrovascular, blood, serous, or drusenoid material as mentioned earlier. When both RPE and Brooks membrane are visible, forming a double layer sign, as Brooks membrane is not visible in normal spectral domain OCT. Double layer sign can be found in central serous chorioretinopathy, polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy, fibrovascular pigment epithelial detachment, and cases of pigment epithelial detachment with pachychoroid. In this OCT cross section, both RPE and Brooks membrane are visible forming a double layered sign and fluids accumulation between layers and the presence of subretinal fluid which indicates an active neovascular process. Geographic atrophy is presented with RPE atrophy in OCT as in this case it shows prominent Brooks membrane and absence of RPE layer and increased reflectivity of the underlying choroid due to absence of RPE to reflect the light. OCT can accurately measure and locate geographic atrophy, which is very important to classify and monitor age-related macular degeneration. Choroidal thickness can vary between individuals as it can increase or decrease in size and best imaged using inhaled depth imaging or swept source OCT. As the increased thickness along with dilated halors may be a feature of spectra of diseases called pachychoroid, which is featured in central serous chorioretinopathy, polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy, and some cases of fibrovascular pigment epithelial detachment. However, in this case, we can see pachychoroid featuring increased thickness of the choroid and dilated halors, still with focal choroidal excavation leaving an area of subretinal fluid. This can be found in some cases of central serous chorioretinopathy and less likely to be associated with choroidal neovascularization. In contrast, choroidal can be thinned due to atrophic or degenerative changes such as myopia and age-related macular degeneration. Sometimes patchy atrophy with loss of choroid and outer retinal tissue can be found in myopia or diffuse thinning leaving only large choroidal vessels under the RPE. In this case of advanced age-related macular degeneration, there is a subretinal scar and RPE atrophy along with choroidal thinning and increased focal reflectivity under the area of RPE atrophy. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned for the next presentation where I will discuss other common reflectivity changes in OCT of macular diseases.